Welcome to the Moving Past You radio show, a show about identifying, confronting, and embracing the obstacles that block and delay us in walking in our divine purpose. Each week, we delve into the complexities and rewards of walking in your purpose. Now, here's your host, Juanita Gaynor. Hello, everyone. I remember to take it off of mute this time. You know, the last time I did, and I was so excited to talk to you and talk to everyone. But it is the 15th. I'm so excited. Birthday has been a blast. So, you know, most everyone know this is the birthday month. The birthday was on Wednesday. um, And the girlfriend, you know, the bestie is in town. And she has just been made it really easy. Her and the hubs has made it really easy just for me to enjoy myself. And so I thank everyone for all the birthday love, the birthday wishes. Um, The new year is coming up and it is just going to be so amazing. Now, this is the final show of the year. Think about it. When the next time after this, the next time you see us, it will be 2024. Isn't that amazing? We have gone through an amazing year. An amazing Thanksgiving. We're about to descend on the various holiday seasons, Christmas, Hanukkah, um, Kwanzaa, and all of those amazing things. And I want to thank everyone for the time that they've taken to pour into us, for the time that they've taken to watch the show, to listen to the show, because it means a lot that you allow us in your home each and every Friday to bring some amazing women on their journeys, on their purposes of how they're helping others obtain their purpose. And so with that being said, we're going to have an amazing guest tonight. Um, And I'm just going to preference a lot of these amazing women I talked to earlier in the year when we was planning out and whatever. And so they said yes. When I asked, they said yes. We talked and it was like we had known each other all of our lives. And their stories are amazing. What they bring to tell you is amazing. How they come to uplift you is amazing. So I am definitely looking forward to what our next guest has to bring to you. Who will that be, might you say? So we are going to have Miss Chris Ashley. She's a coach, author, speaker. And tonight we're going to be talking about change your mind to change your reality. Now, that is important. Like anyone who knows me, you know that I am very important when it comes to mindset. That is what I do. That is what is, you know, core to me. Because sometimes we do all these crazy things and we don't want to change the reality of the situation. We don't want to do whatever. We want to do the surface level. And we're really, we're going to go beyond that today. So who is this amazing woman and coach and entrepreneur? Let me tell you about her. Um, Chris Ashley is an author coach and speaker, and has dedicated the last two decades to delve into research, spiritual teachings, and transformative practices, which she generally imparts. Her book, Change Your Mind to Change Your Reality, holds endorsements from three experts affiliated with The Secret, including Anita Rajani, as well as numerous other figures in the realms of spiritual and personal development. You know, for details about Chris's coaching services, her online courses, events, and more, you can reach her at her website. But you know what? We have her here. We have her right here. So I'm going to introduce to some and present to others, none other than Chris Ashley. Hi, Chris. How are you? Hi, Juanita. Thank you so much for such a warm welcome. I am doing so well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. You know. That is so great. You know, I can tell that you've been busy. You told me you've been busy. And so I'm just excited about, and I thank you for taking the time to share your wealth and your knowledge with, you know, all of us on today. Um, And I know when I had, you know, scheduled you and I asked for, I asked everyone for their topic, your topic touched me. So, and your book is great. Trust me, y'all. You'll you'll get a chance to get the book. Trust me. You know, you want to do so. But it hit me to my core because it really wasn't until I changed my mind that my reality changed because I was able to see, you know, things clearly. You know, 
what got you into this path of, you know, helping others, you know, do their shift their mind to live their best life? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so I had a spiritual awakening in 2002. And, you know, very similar to many people who have had a spiritual awakening or reinvented themselves or just got to that point where they're like, something has to change. Uh, it all came from my own trauma. So my story is that when I was 12 years old, I was sexually abused by a family member for four years. And I had this really big, tight-knit, extended Italian family. When they found out what happened, many of them disowned me. And I was getting calls from people who had been very close to me telling me they didn't love me anymore. I wasn't their family anymore. And as you can imagine, this left me with a lot of what I call low vibration emotions, like anger and guilt that as a young adolescent, I didn't know how to cope with. You know, most adults don't know how to cope with those types of emotions. And it sent me into this spiral of uh, self-harm and drugs and getting in trouble in school. And I was in a really dark place. And then my world, my life completely changed when someone handed me a book, The Power of Books, right? And what this book did was it showed me there is another way of thinking and being and moving through life, that there's more to life and human consciousness than what we see with our five senses. And I remember reading the pages and just feeling like a sleeper agent, right? Like something inside of me just woke up. When I finished that book, I started reaching for more. And I just became insatiable. I was devouring every metaphysical, spiritual, new age, personal development book I could get my hands on. I started attending retreats. I found all of these teachers to study under. And my my world just vastly changed. I was manifesting their synchronicities. Everything was falling into place. But then the other part of my story is that as I was changing my mind and getting better, my mother started to get worse because she didn't have these books and all these healing modalities I was doing and all these teachers. And her family had been ripped down the seams. And it started to present as physical illness for her. She got very sick with some serious illnesses like cancer and hepatitis but also these really bizarre afflictions that her doctors had no explanation for. Mm. And so they did what they do. They gave her pills and then they gave her pills for the side effects of those pills. She was on a fentanyl patch. They were just throwing anything at the wall, hoping something would stick. And as a result, she slept for all but a few hours of daylight. She would fall down all the time. She would fall asleep at the dinner table we would have uh, these amazing conversations that she just wouldn't even remember the next day. And that lasted for almost 15 years. So I had this compounded guilt that I had destroyed my family and broken my mother. But uh, I like to say that everything happens for a reason. I really believe that. And I realized that my mother was my biggest teacher because for every step that I watched her take deeper into depression and illness and victimization, I kept in the other direction out of that tunnel because I saw firsthand in front of me what happens to a human body and spirit when they go down that path. And then I saw what was happening to my own body and spirit as I was changing my mind. And I made a promise to myself right then that I would do everything I could to heal physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. I would always prioritize my health in those categories. And uh, to this day, it's, it's, I've, you know, I've, I've crafted the life of my dreams. I've been at this for a couple of decades. I finally decided I wanted to give back, took a coaching course, wrote the book and the rest is kind of history. So thank you for letting me share my story. Oh, that is amazing. And I've, I've noticed that with this walk and when I opened up the platform that many of us suffered the same traumas, just maybe at different levels. And it is so important that we share our story because so many people don't realize that we could have those traumas and still be amazing, resilient, successful, promising, purposeful women. You know, I, I think they miss that. You know, they think, you know, we have to just stay in this aspect. Now, when we was when you was talking about your mom, I know for me, my mom, my mom passed. So she never ever got to, she decided to kind of just stay. She could never, she used drugs to cope and everything. So she never 
got the healing that was necessary. She self-medicated till she left here. How has that relationship developed or not developed, you know, with mom? Because sometimes I think we as young women, we still want that relationship with mom, even if it's sometimes not great. We still ache for it. How have you learned to maneuver that or work that out um, amongst, you know, you and how you tell people? Yeah. And I, I, I completely agree that, you know, no matter what, that's our mom and we want that relationship. Uh, so, so like I was saying in the beginning, like, you know, usually people get to that in order for people, most people to change, they get to that point where they're like, I have to change or I'm going to die or something terrible is going to happen. Right. Like, uh, like the universe makes things so uncomfortable that they have no choice but to change. And that happened to her a little bit. She had a really bad fall, uh, worse than the other. She went to the hospital. Her blood pressure was like in the 200s. And they were basically, the doctor was really blunt with her. He was like, you're going to die if you keep going down this path. And she did something that I, no one should ever do. I do not recommend this. Don't do this. She went cold turkey off of everything, which is incredibly, incredibly dangerous. Like more dangerous than being on the things, right? Um Somehow her body survived that. Um, and, you know, she's she's still very far from the picture of health. Um, and, you know, she she has this mantra. It, it, her mantra is, I'm so sick. I'm just so sick. I'm so sick. She says that a lot. And, you know, in my book, I talk about the power of words, right? Uh, when that's your mantra, that's your, you're reinforcing that. But she's doing a lot better than she was. I will say that. And, uh, you know, I had to learn a really hard lesson and it's probably one that you had to learn too, is that we can't fix other people. Right. Mm. Right. That's a big one. And for so long, I felt so responsible for what happened to her and for the state that she was in that I just wanted to fix her. It was like my mission. And I, you know, I would read all these books. I'm such a book nerd. I read like a book a week. And if I found something that I thought would really, really help her. I sent it to her. Like she lives in Chicago. I live in California. I would send it to her. And not even spiritual things. Things like, you know, I remember I sent her Johnny Sarnos's mind-body connection about how emotions are caused by repressed, uh, uh, p- pardon, uh, illness is caused by repressed emotions. And she would just get so offended that I would send her these books. To me, I was like, I was doing it out of love. I was trying to help her. Like, hey, this helped me. This, I think this will help you. But to her, it was like, whoa, you're pushing your beliefs on me. You're saying that you know better than me. And she really got angry. She took offense to it. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, if I write a book, she's going to read it. So my book's dedicated to her. Part of part of the reason for writing it, there were many reasons for writing it, but part of it was for her. And she did read the book a couple of times and she started doing some of the exercises in it. And it's it has really helped her. I've seen a difference. So you know, we're, we're still navigating the relationship, but she's in a much better place than she was even like six years ago. That's good. That's good. And and I want the listeners to understand, you know, and I, in those days, may, some may ask, well, why would you ask that? Because still at the core and at the end of the day, regardless if you went no contact or you decide whatever, you still want that person to gain that healing. You still want that person to be whole because again, you're a part of that person. That person's a part of you. And it, for some people, I know for me, it helped with being able to move forward. It was, I know she can't do any better. I wanted her to do better. And it wasn't my fault that she didn't. And that helped with the healing. And so I want people to know that it is okay for you to want the people around you that may have contributed or didn't, you know, ignored you. You want them to do better. You want them to be whole as well, because, you know, we, we, we're people, we have to communicate, walk around and do things and connect with one another. Yeah, that's so important. And, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in forgiveness. I have a whole chapter on it in my book and, you know, I've, I've even forgiven every single family member. I've forgiven, uh, you know, the person who assaulted me. I've forgiven all the people who wrote those letters and sent those voicemails because it like forgiveness isn't about them. It's for you. And there's so many people out there that are like, what so-and-so did to me is never forgivable, but like, yes, it is. 
everything is forgivable because it's not for the other person. Like there's that great Buddhist quote that holding on to anger is like holding on to a hot coal with the intention of throwing it at someone else. You're the one who gets burned, right? right. So, right. and this isn't about excusing anyone's behaviors. It's so that you can release your anger and your sadness and your your shame, your humiliation, your rage, whatever it is, so that you don't have to carry it around with you anymore. Because all that stuff is poison and poison is only going to hurt you. So, you know, and and to, to go off of what you were saying, I think a big part of forgiveness is understanding that, you know, you, you might need to be the bigger person, right? And not not expecting that other person to rise up to meet you at that level. You know, sometimes it's just that you, you've stepped into that, you've taken the higher road, you've stepped into that path, and then you have that boundary, right? Forgiveness and boundaries are two different things too, right? You never, never have to talk to the person again to forgive them. Um, so I appreciate what you said. Yeah. And I think that's what people don't understand. Um, and I do want you maybe to expound a little bit more on that, because I think they feel that I've forgiven that person and I have to bring them back into my life. And that's not the case. There is boundaries, there's things or whatever. Um, I I want you to maybe talk about a little bit more what those types of boundaries would look like, because I think really that is a big confusion when you talk about forgiveness. They feel I've forgiven them, so I have to include them. I got to invite them to all of it. And it doesn't entail that. I want you to go into a little bit more detail about that and how you even work with potential clients when it comes to that. So I feel that's a big part of the healing process. Totally. <clears throat> Let me explain a little bit more about how I teach people forgiveness and the boundary piece is going to come in there. So okay. I like to start with this little teaching story. Imagine that you are in your house and you hear this meowing coming from outside. And so, and if, if you're not a cat person, imagine it's barking. Right? <laughs> it could be a cat or dog, but imagine you hear this and you go outside and in the far corner of your yard, you see this, this scrawny black and white cat. And you think, oh, I love kitties. I'm going to go touch the kitty. I want to go pet the kitty. I want to go interact with it. And as you go over to it, it hisses at you and it arches its back and it swats at you. Now, what is your immediate reaction? You're going to say, this is a mean cat. This is an evil cat. Like that cat's kind of an asshole, right? But if you stay and you really look at that cat, you allow yourself to see that cat, you might notice its leg is bleeding. And so your mind starts to go, okay, this animal's injured. And if you keep staying, you might peek over it and see four tiny baby kittens with their eyes still closed. And suddenly your perspective changes to one of compassion, concern, empathy. And you could do the same thing with the people in your lives because more often than not, when people lash out at you or hurt you in some kind of way, they are coming from a place of their own pain and their own fear. And it has nothing to do with you. You know, most people aren't out there, you know, unless they they have like serious mental issues or, you know, but most people in the world are not out there trying to actively hurt you or create chaos or havoc in your life. Right. You know, everyone is so wrapped up in their own stuff, in their own head. They're not thinking about you, but all you're doing is taking it personally thinking, oh, this is how it affects me. Right. So there's also this level of like personal responsibility for like not taking things personally. Right. Um, there's this, one of my favorite poems is called on the day you read this by Lane Thomas. And there's this line in there. I love that says, no one's really judging you when you walk into a room and all they really want to know is if you're judging them. And that's so powerful, right? Because everyone is just so concerned with their own stuff. Now, the way that I teach people to forgive, is, you know, we tend to turn people who have, we've perceived to have done us wrong into monsters in our minds because it's easier for us to hate them that way, right? So we've run everything they've ever said and done through this mm -hmm. filter yeah. where we can only see the evil, right? And everything has had this uh, terrible intention and maliciousness behind it. Wow. Now, if you can learn to see these monsters as, as different kind of beings, as teachers, you will always be growing. And the ability to do this will completely change your life. Because mm -hmm. when someone is your teacher, you are always learning and growing. So there's two ways to turn monsters into teachers. The first way is to think about 
positive attributes this person has, right? What are some ways they've helped you? What are some uh, some things about them that you admire? You know, chances are there's something you have admired and they're not this like purely evil entity that your lack of forgiveness wants you to believe. Right. Everyone has different sides to them. What do the people who love them see in them? Right. Chances are they see a very different person than you see. And unfortunately, when you the side of someone that you see is what you're going to keep getting. Right. You know, um, you know, what do what good have they done for the world? What good have they done for other people? So if you're like, OK, if you're thinking about your monster right now and you're like, Shh. Like this person is the worst person in the world. No one loves them. They're worse than Hitler himself. Like, okay, there's another way to turn a monster into a teacher. And that is to, to realize ways that they've helped you grow. And maybe that is showing you how you want to treat other people or how you don't want to treat other people. Yeah. Maybe it's helping you set up boundaries. Maybe it's helping you step into your power. Like chances are, You've learned something from your encounters with them, or you would learn if you could just let go of your anger and hate, right? So the idea of boundaries is just understanding all of these things, seeing seeing them for the teachers that they are, sending them love, right? And, and you don't have to talk to them ever again. Right. You know, just because just they don't they don't need a, to be a part of your life. But letting go, you're letting go of that emotion attached to it right? You're not going to be triggered if you see them. You're not going to be triggered if someone brings up their name. Um, but, you know, they don't, they don't need to be in your life because they're not going to add anything to your life, right? Right. But you can forgive them and do all this inner work yourself. Yeah. And, and thank you because that reinforces um, something that I'm a firm believer of. Um, when I went through my own healing challenge, I stopped saying that I had bad relationships. Mm -hmm. I started saying that I had relationships that taught me something. It taught me something that I wanted or I didn't want. So for me, a relationship, it was either a lesson, a blessing, or it was both. Yeah. And so therefore, it was like, it was either going to teach me what I did, didn't want to be, how I did, didn't want to be treated, what I didn't want to be around, or it blessed me to go to another level. And I was telling someone and it was like, oh my God, but that was such a bad experience. I was like, but it was a blessing because I realized that if I didn't heal, that's where I was going to end up. Yeah, That person is just whatever. So um, thank you for emphasizing that because again, a lot of people struggle with that in their process because I think that's what hinders them from really doing the mindset change so that they can operate in their optimal reality um, when it comes to doing other things to move them into their purpose, whatever. Yeah. And and I just want to say, like, I, I love what you said. And, you know, every heartbreak we go through, every challenge, every adversity has this hidden Easter egg inside of it. And if you can discover it, tremendous healing, leveling up and growth takes place, right? Like life is happening for you, not to you. Right. And if you could see challenges as opportunities to learn and grow, then you're you're going to thrive. Your life is not going to be the same. You're going to be a thriver and a survivor rather than a victim. Okay. Yes. And, and so this is also something that I have to ask everybody this year. Um, I feel that we're on the um, inside of COVID, meaning we it's going to be with us. It's, you know, what I call endemic is going to be around, but with with COVID happening and the lo lockdown and things happening, how have you noticed that there may be a shift, had been a shift in your clients or your potential clients? Like what was some of the things that you saw come from that? You know, I think a lot of good came from it. I said all good came from it. Um, but how has that helped you maybe tweak or identify other ways to help your base um, and the people that you work with? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. I kept saying that during COVID. I was like, I think this is all going to happen for a good reason, right? Like, because again, that's how I feel about life, right? Everything happens for a good reason. So I do think a lot of good came out of it. Um, it goes back to what I was saying in the beginning. Like, it, usually I was talking about it on an individual level, but on a collective level as well, it's true. Like, sometimes it takes things falling apart 
for us to be able to build something better for us to be able to reinvent ourselves or, or make that right turn, you know? Um, so I, you know, I like to work with people who are ready to change. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't force someone to change. Right. So a lot of the people that I work with uh, want to reinvent themselves. They're feeling stuck. Maybe they have this debilitating emotional stress that's been holding them back and they're ready to release it uh, because those are the kind of people I want to work with. And I've noticed, I noticed during COVID people kind of fell into two camps. There were the people that were like, amazing. I have all this extra time on my hands. I'm going to build something. I'm going to learn something. I'm going to do personal development work. I'm going to like, I'm going to take advantage of this. And then there were the other people that just like totally shut down. Right. And that's not to say that any, that like, uh, that's not to like talk poorly about them or to say that that there's anything wrong. Like people were coping with how they coped, but you know, I wrote my book during COVID. I took like tons of courses. I read tons of books, you know, and, and my clients tend to be people who had that mindset shift during COVID too, where it's like, wait, now I have this time to do these things I want to do. Like, I'm going to start that business. I'm going to build this thing. I'm going to do this project. So that's kind of the, the empowerment that I saw come out of it with at least the people in my circles. Wonderful. Yeah. I, I got, I saw that too. I saw a lot of people really taking that time to reflect and identify that this isn't where I want to be. I want something more and actually having the kind of time to do it. You know, it made you think you, of course you, you had to talk to the kids. You had to talk to the husband. You had to talk to the wife. Like y'all had to have meaningful conversations now and to mm-hmm. identify where you were in life. You can no longer hide behind the kids' soccer practice or the you know swim team. Everybody was in the same location. So I know a lot of the clients that I got, it was, oh my goodness, like I, I was trying to run for this for so long, but I have no choice but to kind of deal with it, which was great um, for a lot of people. Um, as well as we were talking earlier about um, mental health. Um, This was before we went on. And I want you to talk about how important it is for people to seek therapy before they even get to you. And why is that important in moving forward into what the, the, you know, the end game work? Because I think people think, you know, we've talked about it. They think, oh, you're coaches. You can handle all of those things. And, um, Sometimes I've said it, you know, even on my platform, but I want you to really explain how you would explain it, you know, the difference between the two and why is it so important that therapy is foremost before we get into the the grimy of the the life coaching and the life changing that they want to do. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, you and I totally did go off on that a little bit. Um, well, so I... I... I, on my website, I literally just pulled up my website because I'm like, I'm going to tell you exactly what it says. Um, you know, there's a difference between therapy and coaching, right? And what I say on there is a therapist helps the client by helps a client heal by figuring out the why. And a coach helps clients move forward by focusing on the how, right? A therapist focuses on deep seated emotional issues to work on personal healing or trauma recovery. A coach focuses on clarifying goals and identifying obstacles in order to create action plans to achieve desired results and unlock your potential. And then the third point was a uh, therapist focuses more on healing from the past, where a coach focuses more on getting where, getting you where you want to be next. So, you know, I think it is really important to distinguish because, you know, as you and I were saying, we've both had clients uh, try to try to treat us as a therapist and, you know, even like liability reasons for us, like that's just a no go, right? That's just, um, it's, it's safer for the client. It's safer for us. It's better for all parties. Um, I love therapy. I think everyone should go to therapy. (laughs) Um, I've been in therapy in many, many instances throughout my life and there's so many different kinds. I, uh, most recently discovered EMDR, which is amazing. Um, but you know, I, what I really work out on with people is helping them shift their perception. And like I said, like you can't, it's really, it's really hard to work with someone if they're not ready to change. And a lot of that readiness to change comes from doing that work beforehand, right? It comes from getting to that place 
of maybe what I call the dark night of the soul, right? The, of that darkness of needing to pivot out of it. And sometimes a therapist is uh, the best person to help guide you through that in addition to a coach, right? I also work a lot with people to help release repressed emotions and change their perception about challenges they've gone through, uh, relationships, healing, like all these things. So it does touch a lot on healing modalities, but you know, it's very different from therapy work. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, and I thank you for that because again, you know, us coaches need to stick together when it comes to that, because we have so many people we can genuinely help, but we want to make sure that they know that, okay, we want you to get the proper help. And we're not just saying it because we don't want to help you. I think they think that. I think they say we think they think because you just don't want to help us. No, we want we we want to help you properly. Yeah. We want to make sure you're good properly. You know, I get it a lot on social media too, which is interesting. I have a lot of people DM me and say, I'm going through this awful thing in my life, or I've gone through this trauma or whatever. Like, what do I do? How do I fix it? And, you know, you feel bad when you're like, well, come take my course or come work with me, you know, like, so I, I try to like give people some, a little bit of guidance, but then again, that's where setting boundaries comes in. Right. Because, um, you know, just telling someone through, through text, like some big advice like that can put you in kind of dangerous waters too. Yeah. So you have to you have to be really careful to walk that line. That's good. Yeah, I, I tend, you know, personally, I have some referrals that I can refer them to. Be like, hey, you know, this is what is presented. You know, talk to this person. They can help you a little bit more in a proper setting, you know, because I want you, you know, I may check up and, to, and things like that. But yeah, we do have to protect ourselves. Yeah. And so we was talking about your book and you said you wrote it during COVID. Um, how, um, when you wrote the book, um, what was the main purpose behind writing it and how has it opened other doors for you as you're working with your clients and even with your own, you know, healing and self healing? It's a great question. Yeah. So, you know, first of all, I wrote the book in like a month. It just, it, I feel like I channeled Ooh. flowed out of me. Wow. I had notes in my phone that I would just add to constantly for like a year of things I wanted to touch on. But once I sat down, it was like a month and it just, it just, lit I got up in the morning, I had my coffee, I sat at my computer and then I just didn't move for like 12 hours. Yeah. I was like in the flow state. Yeah. Um, and you know, the book was so cathartic to write also. Uh, so I've been, I've been a teacher in various aspects of my life. I used to teach uh, English I taught yoga. I, I, was, I also own a yoga studio. I used to teach people how to teach yoga. So I ran yoga teacher trainings and I'm a coach. And in all of these different professions, I've learned that the best way to learn information is to teach it to someone else. Mm -hmm. Because when you have to sit down and figure out how to make it accessible and figure out how to break down these complex ideas into uh, digestible pieces that yeah. people can understand, especially because I talk a lot about science in my book. I talk a lot about quantum physics. Like when you can really explain all these complex thoughts in a simple way, you understand it on a deeper level. And it also made me have so much more, uh, I guess, just I guess just gratitude and respect for the teachers that lit the path before me, the teachers that inspired me that I learned from and from my own lived experiences. So I got so much out of it. And, and like I said, it was so cathartic to write as well. So, and I also said earlier, I also wrote it in part for my mom, but you know, all of these things, it was, it was two decades culmination of work, right? I've been on this path since 2002 and I've studied and I've studied and I've studied and I've put into practice and I've done all these healing modalities and I'm still learning, right? right? It, the learning never ends. I'm still right. going to seminars and reading all the books and doing all the things, but you know, all these things helped me so much that I wanted, I wanted to share them with the world. Right. And I think a lot of people out there aren't, aren't on this crazy quest for knowledge like I am. They're not reading a book a week. They're not going to every seminar, right? So being able to also take all of that and distill it down and, and synthesize it so that I can, I can help 
people get all this knowledge that maybe they wouldn't otherwise and say, oh my gosh, and I read this author and this author and I, I studied under this teacher and this teacher and like, you wouldn't think they're connected, but here's how they are. And isn't that exciting? Mm-hmm. So I, I think the book does all of those things, which is really, really fun. Gives people a lot of breadcrumbs to follow. Um, if there's a particular methodology I talk about, they can go they can go pursue that or look it up or read up more about it. So, uh, you know, I got a lot out of it and I did, did I answer your question now? I forgot your original question. No, you did answering it now perfectly. Cause that was what I wanted to know. Like, you know, how, how has it helped you move forward? How has it helped your hmm. client base? What, you know, brought you to do it? Like I'm excited about it because you're right. It, when you're researching a particular book that you want to do or, or writing, even if it's about, how you've gone through your life. It it is amazing how much you research and dig deep to really have because you want the person who's reading it to understand it the way you understand it in even a deeper level. Like, you know, I'm a math girly. I like, you know, physics. Like you're talking to a girl who, who did physics and trig and all of that and would just do the homework and just be like, okay, I'm done. So I understand that aspect of it, but someone else may not. And so to have the joy of breaking it down and someone getting it on that level and it helping them, I definitely understand that. That's the best thing. Yeah, totally. And then as far as how it helped me, I mean, like, like you said in the beginning, so I had three people who were on The Secret, for those of you who have seen the film, The Secret endorse it. So that was Marcy Shimoff, Bob Doyle, and Michael Beckwith all huge in the personal development space. Um, John Gray endorsed it, who wrote Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Anita Morjani, who wrote Dying To Be Me. She was Wayne Dyer's protege. And then like 10 other people in the personal development and spiritual space. So that alone opened a lot of doors. Um, I, I ended up launching my own podcast about a year ago. And through all these connections, I was invited to join a podcast network that's owned by the Los Angeles Tribune. So they help a lot with distribution Mm -hmm. and promotion. They're doing a lot with um, podcasters working in the personal development space. So I was just on a Think and Grow Rich panel with the Think and Grow Rich Institute. There's some great headliners, Mary Morrissey, who I did my coaching with, Les Brown, like just huge people. And I've just gotten a lot of speaking gigs, a lot of... um, been on like 70 podcasts promoting the book, which, which has been the best gift because I've met so many amazing people and had such amazing connections and conversations. And I, yeah, so it's been, it's been great. That's wonderful. I I love to see that when a person's art actually makes room for them and expands the horizons because sometimes, you know, we don't think about the things that, that when we really kind of release it, and we're like, we're releasing it to the help others, but not only help ourselves, but then when it catches hold and then it goes from that little small place you release it from and now it's nationwide and it's global, or it's international. That is when you really see that, oh, wow, I should have let that, I should have did that earlier. Or, oh, wow, that's really helping more than, you know, it's going further than what I thought it could ever do. So I know that's a great feeling to see others, you know, taking what you've done, understanding it, digesting it, and then using it to move forward in their lives. Absolutely. And I think it comes down to following your passion and your joy. Because when you when you follow your passion and you do things that make you feel good, you keep adding to that pile of goodness, like it, it puts you in that flow state, right? You're in, you're on your purpose, you're living your purpose, you're living your your life path. And then there's so much ease, right? There's so much flow and more things that make you feel lit up, get, get brought to you. And, and you, and the same when you live with uh, your own authenticity, right? People always talk about these high vibration emotions, like love and joy and compassion and gratitude. And those are so important, but authenticity is just as important, Mm -hmm. right? Being your own authentic self, following uh, your heart, you know, so many people stay in jobs that are subpar or relationships they're unhappy with because they don't think they're worthy or they're afraid, right? You know, 90% of people don't achieve their goals. And it's for two reasons. One, they they get started and they get stuck 
and they just give up, right? Because they, they don't, they can't adapt or move through it. But the bigger reason is they're so fearful to get started that they don't even begin in the first place. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's about like following your passion and your joy and being authentic to who you are and what you're meant to do on this earth and, and trusting that it's all going to work out. Yeah. That is the key, like getting, really getting started. Um, and for those who are listening, you know, we're not saying, oh my goodness, you know, I, I was afraid at one point. I think we all were at some point, but I can say, I can speak for myself and I can probably definitely speak for Chris when we said we, even though we may have been a little scared to do it, we saw the overall bigger goal. There was somebody we wanted to reach or someone we wanted to reach with our message and with our story to make us go to that next point to say, okay, like for the book, even though you wanted it, you wanted your mom to be better subconsciously. So it's just like, she won't read no one else's, but she'll, she'll probably read it if I do it, you know, and we can put all the information in. Um, I did that with an aunt of mine. I couldn't, you know, really talk to her about the, the trauma that I had. And so I was, you know, I had collabed on a book and I sent it to her. And we were able to have an open conversation about what really happened because she was willing to read that and all the other women's and it was like, and get it. But when you send the articles and other people's work, you're like, man, I don't want to hear that. So we all, we all operated scared at one point. Yeah. And I think that's so important. And I think, I think the key is like, you just do it afraid. You know, like you might be terrified, but you just, you do it despite the fear or you do it afraid, you do it anxious, you do it sad, you do it whatever. And growth happens when you step outside of your comfort zone, Mm. right? There's that old, that old saying, like the comfort zone is where dreams go to die. Like you have to get out of your comfort zone to grow. You know, if, if you take nothing else from this episode, take that. And, and you do it afraid. And if you fail, you fail forward. You learn the lesson and you try something else. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you know, in order to have something you've never had before, you have to do something you've never done before. Yeah. Simple as that. Because otherwise you're, you're thinking the same thoughts. You have the same belief system. The same emotions are created from that, the same actions, the same habits. So you might live for 20 more years, but you're living the same year 20 more times because nothing's changing. That's powerful. Yeah. That's very powerful. That's powerful and an amazing outlook because I've never thought of it in that way. Mm-hmm. I've never thought of it in that way. You know, you're, you're living the same year every year. 20 times if you don't make that change that's powerful so if you don't want to live like that we got to make the change yeah Yeah. and it even goes down to like our our chemistry our bodies like let's say you went through something traumatic and you you haven't done that healing work right so every time you think about that thing it creates the same emotions right the same chemistry in your body and your body doesn't know the difference between you thinking about it and it happening in real life right so the same cortisol gets released the same adrenaline gets released and if you live in this state of stress long enough your brain starts to go into incoherence which is when like groups of neurons stop talking to other groups of neurons right it's it's like a bunch of drummers banging out different rhythms like it's chaos it's disorder and when your brain's in incoherence, your body's in incoherence. So your brain sends that same chaotic signal to your central nervous system. And then your central nervous system sends that same chaotic signal to your immune system, your endocrine system, your digestive system, your respiratory system. Mm-hmm. You can quite literally make yourself sick. And it all starts with you thinking about this on repeat, right? And that's what happened to my mom. You know, like, that's why I saw what happened to her. So, you know, it goes beyond it, you know, there's, there's physical repercussions to all of this. It's, it's, you know, we live in a day and age where neuroscience and epigenetics and quantum physics, all these sciences are backing up what spirituality and mystics and ancient cultures have been saying for eons. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing time to be alive. It is. It really, really is. So 
I want you to tell the people how what you have coming up, if you got any plans coming up, things that you got coming up, how they can reach out to you. Um, I'm just going to give you this moment to just promote the things that you got going on um, for the remaining year or the be- into the beginning of the year. Well, the main thing I have going on is I'm eight and a half months pregnant. So <laughs> that's what I'm really birthing in the beginning of the year, like an actual human being. Um, but no, there's a lot of ways to connect with me. So chrisashley.net is my website. Change your mind. Thank you. Change your mind with Chris is my handle everywhere. So I'm on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all the things. Perfect. Thank you so much. And, uh, my book is called change your mind to change your reality. I have a little gift. If yep, that's it. If you go to change your mind to change your reality.com slash order book, then if you buy the book through that website, you can get the course that goes uh, hand in hand with it for free. I also have a free masterclass that I do every couple of weeks, uh, some freebies on my website. I have a group coaching class. Um, I have a pre-recorded course. I have a mini course. There's lots of ways. So yeah, exactly. Head over to the website, connect with me on social media, change your mind with Chris Ashley is my podcast. If you want to listen to that. And uh, thank you so much for letting me uh, self-promote for a moment. No, that is wonderful. Um, Again, I just loved our conversation. I loved it earlier on when we first met. Um, I'm so excited for the little bambino and bambina that's (laughs) approaching that you get to bond with and enjoy with come the new year. Um, And then so you'll have some downtime and then you'll be up and at it again with it, you know, with everything. So I'm grateful that you have that downtime, but I was grateful that you took the time with us on this evening to close out our year, you know, in this, such an amazing fashion. Because again, with the holiday season, mindset is everything. And we're always going into those difficult environments with, you know, family, friends, and got to know that our mind is where it's at. You know, I, I love it. And again, I want you, I'm gonna put the book up there. Go get the book. Go get the book. See, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the site and I'm going to order the book through here and do the things too. So it's like, you know, it is amazing for those who may, you know, may I catch it, you'll find notes, book, definitely will have a way for you to always reach out to her. Chris, thank you for being here on this evening. Thank you so much. And I forgot to say the book is also available in paperback, ebook, and audiobook. So if you like to look there too. Thank you so much for having me, Juanita. Uh, this is one of my last interviews of the year. It was great to be your last guest of the year. And uh, thank you for the work you do. It's it's important and I appreciate you. Thank you so very much. Thank you for being here. Wasn't that amazing? I told you guys that it's it's just been awesome. Again, if you didn't get whatever, you can head over to our website, movingpastyou.com. Um, everything to be able to connect with Chris will be there. All the lovely links, show notes, and all of that. Connect with her. Get to know her. You, If you're not ready, you may know somebody who is ready to refer over to that. You may say, oh, what if I don't forget how to reach her? You can reach out to me and we'll pass that information along. You know, we are here to help promote other people. You know, we we work with the ladies. That's what we do. That is what we do. That is who we are. But we want everyone to be whole that is ready to do the work that goes into that. You know, like I said, this is the last show of the season, not of the season of 2023. We still got a much to do a season, you know. So again, thank you so much for everything and all that you put into it. Um, We will be back on the first week of January. We are taking our Christmas and New Year break. Um, We want you to enjoy your family, enjoy your loved ones, um, and just do family. And if you know what, if you don't have family, quote unquote, create your own traditions, create your own environment, create your own family. You know, for those who know me or follow me, this is the first time and maybe almost 20 years that I am actually putting up a Christmas tree and I am actually decorating this year, you know, a year. So I did some decoration, but I am really going all out this year and it will be done by tomorrow. So I'll share pictures, whatever, but I'm, 
I am in a great space and I've decided that I'm going to let that show with those decorations of the holiday season because again, I'm creating something new, you know, and whether it's small, you may do a small tree, whether it, whatever it is, create that new tradition so that you can go forth and be healed. Again, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening, and we will see you in the new year. Have a great one. Thanks for joining us this week on the Move and Pass Your Radio Show. Make sure to visit our website at www.movingpastyou.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes. If you found value in the show, rate us on iTunes or simply tell a friend about the show. And be sure to tune in next Friday for our next episode. And remember to always be kind in your word, your thought, and in your deed. Be blessed.